So you want to upgrade your terrible stock cooler on your new and shiny Dell G5 or XPS gaming desktop PC, or maybe you want to just upgrade the case fans to improve airflow. Well, maybe you do a Google search on how to do this and then you find a bunch of Reddit posts with hundreds of comments, or you visit Dell's forums only to deal with a mess of pages upon pages of people asking questions, going off topic. What CPU coolers are compatible? What hardware do I need? Do I need an M3 washer? What length should the screw be? What's this grub method? What's this alternative method? What spacers do I use on the Noctua CPU cooler? Which cooler is better, the Noctua NH-U9S or the Noctua NH-D9L? What about the boot up BIOS error? What case fans are compatible? Do I need to remove the motherboard to install the back bracket? Okay, you get it. So there are a lot of questions on how to do this and it's very confusing. Now, a YouTuber by the name of David Dost Tech made a really interesting video comparing the three types of coolers that you could potentially install on your Dell G5 or XPS. One is the pancake stock OEM cooler. The second one is the cooler that you get from Dell, the premium cooler, which is accompanied by K-series Intel chips. And the third type of CPU cooler is the Noctua NH-U9S. Now, although the video was very insightful and very entertaining, he didn't go into much detail on how to install an aftermarket CPU cooler. And don't get me wrong, there were some really good organized Reddit and Dell forum posts, but I felt like these posts were lacking some details like such as step-by-step -step instructions on how to do specific upgrades. I find video to be extremely helpful, especially for those who haven't tinkered much with a computer. Hence, this specific video. If you were just as overwhelmed as I was, spending countless nights going through the Dell forums, trying to find all the information, trying to gather it all up, I really hope that this video puts your mind at ease and makes the whole experience of upgrading your Dell G5 or XPS gaming PC to be a lot easier. Not only is the goal of this video to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to upgrade all your components, I also want to answer the question, was it worth your time, money, and effort to upgrade all these components? Is there going to be better noise levels, thermals, and of course, how does it impact your day-to-day -day regular use? Let's get right into it. So in my previous video titled, do not make these mistakes when buying a Dell pre-built PC, I advise my audience to upgrade to the K version of any Intel chip so that you would get the more premium Dell OEM cooler. And as you can see in my review of the Dell G5 in a separate video, I did end up paying that extra $100 to upgrade to the K version. Now that isn't such a bad deal even though I threw out the entire cooler into the garbage because it ended up being not as good as I had hoped. Now in my previous Dell G5 video, I did dedicate a whole section talking about why I was utterly disappointed with the sound, the noise levels of the Dell Premium OEM cooler in my Dell G5. So check it out if you want to see it. Now for the TLDR, if you do end up getting the K CPU chip and you get the Premium cooler, it's going to be infinitely better than the tiny stock pancake cooler that you get if you get the non-K version of any Intel chip. The only real issue I had with the Dell Premium cooler was that the fan that is embedded in between the heat sinks are, is, is pretty noisy. It doesn't have a very nice low frequency hum. It has a more of like, you can kind of hear a ball bearing and it's just not very pleasant to the ears even at low RPMs. Now, I want to put a disclaimer. I have extreme OCD and this is a very subjective matter. So perhaps the premium Dell OEM cooler is more than sufficient, especially compared to the pancake cooler that you would typically get. I want to quickly make a major correction to what I just said in regards to Dell's K premium CPU cooler. I was completely wrong. After replacing the stock cooler with the Noctua cooler, it turns out that the source of the annoying buzzing noise was actually from the terrible power supply that Dell provides. I'm honestly quite sad that I went through all this work to upgrade the CPU cooler to only find out that it was the power supply that was the culprit for the noise. Anyways, let's get back into the regular program. In terms of day-to-day -day use, the premium cooler was not bad in terms of temperatures, but you are leaving performance on the table according to this reputable source, uh, David Das Tech, another YouTuber that did a benchmark comparing all these coolers, the, the Dell Pancake Cooler, the Premium Dell Cooler, and the Noctua Cooler. And it turns out that the Noctua Cooler does provide a little bit more performance because it doesn't throttle as much as the two other Dell coolers. Again, I want to make a little correction. Yes, according to that source, there was a minor performance boost in a synthetic benchmark when you upgraded from the Dell Premium Cooler to the Noctua Cooler. But don't go out and throw out your more than adequate Dell Premium Cooler just yet. You may be better off just leaving the Dell Tower Cooler as is rather than wasting your money on, an, on this upgrade. We're going to talk more about that later in the conclusion section of this video. Now in the end, it may seem that I wasted $100 upgrading to the K CPU because I'm not going to be using the CPU cooler that comes with it. But in the end, I did get a VRAM heatsink, which, you know, normally costs $30 in Canada. 
and I could technically sell the Dell Premium Cooler for someone who doesn't want to go through the trouble of getting the right hardware for a Noctua cooler, for example. So I could sell that maybe on the secondary market. Maybe I get 50 bucks back. And most interestingly, it's the difference between a non-K CPU and a K CPU is about 70 Canadian dollars. So the $100, you could think about maybe the heatsink is the $30 extra. So I didn't necessarily waste all my money. I'm hoping that the, the difference at stock speeds from the F version to the KF version of the CPU chip is going to be a lot better. Unfortunately, even though I have a K series Intel chip that is overclockable, I can't overclock and squeeze more performance out of it thanks to the crappy motherboard that is provided by Dell, which prevents any easy overclocking. In the end, I kind of do regret paying the extra $100 because I don't really care for the K series. Had I done the research, I would have just gone straight away and got the F series chip and just upgrade to the Noctua cooler. Lucky for you, you don't have to do any research. You just got to watch this video and you can avoid the same mistake I made. So for the first upgrade, we're going to be doing the CPU cooler because this is probably going to be your biggest bang for buck, especially if you have the crappy low profile pancake cooler. So for the first point of confusion I had is which CPU cooler is compatible with the Dell G5 or the XPS? And by the way, if I say Dell G5 or XPS, they're basically the same body chassis. So don't worry about it if I mention just G5. Now there are many different types of CPU coolers that have been approved by the Reddit community. The most straightforward installation is probably going to be the Dell VWD01, which is the same CPU cooler you would get if you bought an Intel K series chip. Now this is a direct bolt on. It's really easy. It just, you just have to screw it onto the motherboard because the motherboard already has the hardware bracket behind it and it's kind of mounted onto the case. So you can't really prop out this motherboard and change the bracket. First of all, that's quite an arduous task, but you just can't do it because of the whole customization thanks to Dell. Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, I don't really recommend this Dell premium cooler. I think you can do a lot better, especially when it comes to noise levels and kind of thermal performance, but it is still a lot better than the pancake cooler that you would typically get. And perhaps if you can find this on eBay for cheap and you don't have the deal with finding all the specific hardware for the Noctua installation, then perhaps this is probably the easiest route for you. Now, there are many other aftermarket CPU coolers that you could probably use, such as the ones listed on the screen that you see, but I did not find any good concrete information on how to install these and, what, and whether or not they require some unconventional hacks. Now, the infamous Dell community member by the name of Noor has made a video on how he swapped his Pancake OEM cooler for a Cooler Master TX3 Evo. I'll put a link in the description to his video, but for this video, we'll focus more on the slightly superior Noctua U9S cooler because the Hyper TX3 seems to be out of stock, at least in my country. So before we get into the install steps, I want to quickly mention a few notes about the Noctua U9S tower cooler. So there are two versions of this cooler, the slightly more premium black, all black version, and it's about $10 more. And then there's the ugly brown version. As you can see, I got the ugly brown version. Yay. Now, interestingly, there's a similar type of Noctua cooler of the same 92 millimeter fan size, and it's called the NHD9L, which installs the exact same way as the U9S on, the, on this Dell computer. However, the D9L variant is slightly cheaper, but it's also 50 millimeters lower than the classic U9S. Therefore, it does not perform as well as the U9S, so I don't recommend going for that one as it's slightly inferior. Also, you might be wondering, can I get a much bigger Noctua cooler? Maybe one that uses a 120 millimeter fan. Unfortunately, the U9S is the biggest tower cooler that you can fit in, in this case, the Dell G5 or XPS case. So unfortunately, you can't get larger versions. Now, the Noctua U9S cooler is a single fan configuration and it uses the standard A9 fan that you can buy from Noctua. What's really cool is that you can put this into a push-pull configuration. That means adding a second fan to your setup. In an effort to prevent over-engineering, I'm not going to be adding a second fan as of yet. I'm going to make sure I test the thermals for maybe about a month. And if I'm not happy with the performance, I'll add a second fan and I'll make a separate video about that. So stay subscribed for that. So there are two ways to install this Noctua cooler, but both require you to make a trip to your local hardware store to buy some esoteric screws and washers, unfortunately. For the method that I'm about to show you and method one, this is the most common one that I see on the Dell community forums, and that is to buy a 16 or 20 millimeter length M3 screws with a 0.5 pitch. So an M3 screw or fastener refers to the three millimeter outer diameter. This includes the threading. There was a lot of debate and confusion over the forums of which length is best for the job, 16 millimeters or 20 millimeters. Now you don't want to get a screw that's too long, otherwise it'll bottom out and actually hit into the case. You also didn't want to get a screw that was too short that would prevent the screw threads from locking onto the motherboard. I personally went with the 20 millimeter length 
as it seemed a little bit safer. Maybe it'll catch on a little bit more, but it's not too long. Anything between 16 and 18 or 20 millimeters is totally fine. Now, as for the M3 washers, I wasn't sure if this was actually necessary because those are hard to get, especially in Canada, but I just got them in case. However, you'll see during the install that getting the M3 washers was a big waste of money as first of all, you don't need them. And the ones I got didn't even fit. I'll be honest, finding these screws was the biggest deterrent for me doing this upgrade in the first place. And maybe the main reason why I actually end up getting the K Dale premium cooler, which I regret obviously. Living in Canada, it is very hard to find these particular screws and Amazon would sell them, but they would be very expensive because they would give you a whole pack, maybe like a thousand screws in, in, in a package. So I, you only need four screws. The only place in Canada where I could get this was in home hardware. So for, if you're in, in Canada, definitely check out that store. For some odd reason, Home Depot in Canada doesn't carry M3 screws, unlike the American Home Depot, which does. Now for the second or alternative method, I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but trust me, finding, finding the screws in Canada for that, for that method was really difficult. You'll need M3 by 25 millimeter grub screws, which was impossible to find, or it was too expensive to ship from the US. Okay, finally, let's get into the stall. Step one, unplug the PC and hold and press the power button to discharge any residual power. Ensure you ground yourself to protect your delicate hardware components. I'll put a link in description to this cheap anti-static wrist strap I bought from Amazon. Step three, after you open the case, make sure you disconnect the CPU fan from the header on the motherboard. Step four, use a Phillips screwdriver to unscrew the stock OEM CPU cooler. Make sure to unscrew little by little on, on each different screw so that the pressure is released evenly. Step five, clean the thermal paste with 99% alcohol and use a microfiber. You can use cotton swabs in hard to reach areas. Just make sure not to drench it fully in alcohol. Now you can use 70% alcohol. I, I did a lot of research into this, but I'm not sure what the other 30% contains. Sometimes it contains some kind of chemicals that are not good for your CPU. So I just took the safe route and I got 99% alcohol, but I'm sure it'd be fine with 70%. Also, every YouTuber that cleans their CPU paste when they're doing their videos are using paper towels. I personally don't recommend this as paper towels leave, may leave residual pieces of paper or lint. Microfibers just are lint free. Now for step six, it's time to mount the Intel brackets provided in Noctual. You'll need to use the black spacers provided in the kit as well. Now there was some debate of which size spacers to use, the black ones or the white ones. It seems the black ones are the appropriate size for this job. This was hella confusing, especially when I was reading this all through the Dell forums. People were saying conflicting information. Oh, use the white ones, use the white spacers. There's so much conflicting information and I'm really hoping that this video is gonna straighten this all out for you and, and kind of just give you step by step what to do. Please don't forget to like this video. It took many hours to create and also hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more future content about my Dell pre-built PC. Anyways, back to install. For step seven, you're gonna place the black spacers over the four screw holes on the motherboard, then place the bracket like so. Then insert the M3 screws onto the motherboard and then screw them on. This was honestly one of the hardest parts of the whole install process, which was lining up the black spacers, the brackets, and inserting the M3 screw right into the middle groove of the Intel bracket. This is why the alternative method of using the 25mm grub screws is infinitely easier, as you can use the included Noctua thumb screws just to screw it on. Honestly, I wished I lived in the US so I could buy those darn grub screws. You lucky Americans. For step eight, you're gonna apply your thermal paste. For me personally, this was the hardest part because I wasn't sure how to do this because I don't do this very often and what pattern, how much do I put. Noctua recommends to put like a pea size, but interestingly, I find a lot of information that the X pattern is most optimal. So I, I don't know what to do here in this case, but I actually messed up pretty hard here, as you can see. I think I put way too much thermal paste on my first attempt. I was starting to sweat here out of nervousness. Worst of all, screwing on the Noctua tower heatsink was very difficult because I missed the screw in hole alignment. <sighs> I had to take it off and try it all over again, reapplying the same thermal paste, but this time a little bit less. I honestly don't know what I'm doing here, so let me know in the comment section below if I put the right amount of thermal paste. So in step nine, you're gonna place the cooler without the fan onto the motherboard and secure it to the motherboard. Noxua says make three or four revolutions of the screw on each side until it fully tightens, but don't put too much force. Yet again, this was a nerve wracking process as it was so hard to align the heatsink screws onto the brackets holes perfectly in one try. I actually had to shuffle the heatsink while physically it touching the CPU surface. I'm not sure if missing perfect lock alignment would call for restarting the whole process again, i.e. redoing the thermal paste application and trying all over again. 
For those PC expert builders, let me know if it's okay to shuffle the heatsink while on top of the CPU with thermal paste in order to align the holes, or will that affect the thermal paste performance? So for step 10, attach the A9 92mm fan and connect it to the motherboard fan header. Removing or attaching the fan to the Noctua heatsink was really awkward and difficult. I even sliced my fingers on the sharp edge of the heatsink trying to attach it. Anyways, that's it for the CPU install. You're pretty much ready to go. So for those that live in America and are very lucky, let's talk about the alternative or method number two. Now this method is closer to the actual Noctua installation and you'll be using the thumb screws. The hardest part of this install is trying to obtain the M3 by 25 millimeter grub screws. These are very, very hard to find in Canada and it would take forever to ship and it would cost so much money. So you guys south of the border, lucky you lucky Americans. If I were to pay the exorbitant fees to get these spe special specialty screws, it would cost over 30 Canadian dollars. And then after all the extra money that I paid for the market coolers and the CPU fans, this really ruins the whole budget essence of this PC deal I got from Dell. So I'm putting, I'm pouring so much money into this computer. And I really rather not. The cool thing about using the alternative methods, AKA the grub screws is that if you're less dexterous in your hands or less dim nimble, it's going to be a lot easier to put mount the brackets onto the motherboard because you're just going to be using your thumbs to screw on the actual brackets. Now this method is very similar to the first one. All you have to do is screw in the M3 by 25 millimeter grub screws onto the motherboard, put four of them there, add the black spacers, put the bracket on, and then just use the thumb screws to secure the brackets onto the motherboard. So it's really easy and perhaps a lot more elegant in the end. So that's it. We've talked about two methods to install the CPU cooler. We're going to run some benchmark tests. And then later in this video, we'll talk about the conclusions of whether this was worth it. So we finally get to the conclusions of this upgrade. What I'm about to say is probably going to be shocking, but after hundreds of hours of researching this topic, spending extra money on case fans and this nocturnal cooler, spending hours trying to find the esoteric M3 screws, which were really hard to get during the lockdown in Canada, dealing with a nerve wracking and challenging CPU in cooler install, and having to sell my Dell K-Series tower cooler to recoup some of the costs, this whole upgrade was definitely not worth it. Not worth the time, the effort, the blood and sweat, quite literally, as I had cut my finger on the Noctua heatsink. After running many synthetic and real life benchmarks, I did not notice any substantial difference in performance or thermals from the stock K-series Intel CPU cooler. This was a major disappointment, especially when I had falsely accused the stock K Dell tower cooler of being the culprit of the buzzing noise I had mentioned in my G5 review video. As we learned from the upgrade, it was actually the power supply causing that weird noise. Worst of all, you're gonna have to spend extra time trying to get the optimal fan curves, as it's not an easy task, especially when you mix different case fans with different manufacturers. All in all, this was a big waste of time and money, and I hope this video convinces you that if you had bought the K-Series Intel CPU from Dell, you're much better off just saving your valuable time and money on other upgrades. Now, there's obviously one major exception to this. If you bought the non-K-Series CPU and got the pancake cooler from Dell, then yes, you will definitely notice a huge difference in performance and thermals if you do upgrade to the Noctua cooler. In that specific scenario, this upgrade is nearly essential and you should go ahead and do it. By the way, all the parts and hardware mentioned in this video will be linked in the video description down below. In my next video in this two-part series for the Dell G5 or XPS, I will show you how you can add two more case fans to your computer. So definitely check it out and stay subscribed for that. That's it for this video. Please help support this channel. If you, if you really liked it and it really helped you, please do give a like or subscribe for more Dell pre-built upgrade content. And if you have any questions or comments about this upgrade, I'm very happy to answer. So let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next upgrade video.